We are taking on a homestead automation project, automating the chick shop. Given our northern latitude, sunrise is around 4 a.m. and it is a bright, intense sunrise. And it doesn't get dark until almost 10 p.m. And as any of you chicken owners out there know, chickens operate by daylight. At sunrise, they are up and they don't retire until dark, no matter what time of year it is. With such a late bedtime for the chickens, it kind of complicates my evening chore routine. The chickens are going to bed way after I finish evening chores. So having to come outside at 10 p.m. long after I finished all my other evening chores is really not my favorite thing to do. I started thinking about automation. What automation could be put in place to let the chickens out at 4 a.m. at sunrise? And then also what is going to close that door back late at night long after I'm wanting to be outside doing chores. We would somehow need to automate the door on the chick shaw. I don't know much about automation or how to implement any of that kind of stuff. However, my friend Charlie back in Atlanta has been tinkering with automation on his homestead for the last couple years and has recently launched a new blog all dedicated to homestead automation. And, and with that, Charlie also offers some automation consulting services. I asked Charlie about how we go about automating the chickshaw and he gave me a few different options. We're gonna bring Charlie on here in just a minute so he can tell you all about the system that we came up with. But before we do that, I wanna tell you about the couple different options that he came up with. Option number one would be to have this chickshaw door open laterally like this. Option number two would be to have the chickshaw door drop down from underneath the chickshaw like the Millennium Falcon. The door could be moved automatically by either an actuator or a pulley. We also needed to decide on what would be the trigger, what would cause the door to open and close. The two options there were, one, it could be a light sensor. When the sun would rise, it would trigger the door to open based on the increase in sunlight. And when the sun would set, the darkness of it would cause the door to close. The other option would be a cellular option where we'd actually get a small device that would have connection to a cell tower. It would let a computer attached to the jigsaw know the sunrise and sunset times based on information coming from the weather channel. We decided to go with a door that dropped down like the Millennium Falcon. We decided to go with the simpler of the two trigger options, which would be the light sensor. Having the internet connection was a really neat option. However, there is a monthly charge along with that. Generally, it's around $3 a month for a data plan for a system like this. Though it wasn't expensive, we really didn't want a reoccurring cost. So we just went with the simpler of the two options, the photo sensor. Now let me introduce you to my friend Charlie, who's gonna tell you more about the components that are involved in the system and how it all comes together. Hey guys, Charlie here from iotfoundry.com. And today we're going to be talking about automation. In particular, my buddy Dan has a new chicken coop. Uh, really, it's a mobile chicken platform, if you want to call it that. And he is looking to automate the door. Uh, what he would like to be able to do is put it in a certain location, set it to where as soon as the sun comes up, the door opens, the chickens can go out, do their business. And then at the end of the night, after they're safely tucked back in, the door will close back. So what we're going to do here is we are going to take a look at some parts that will turn into the control system. And here are the pieces that we are going to put together. All we'll need are these little bits of hardware, a couple of little circuits that you can buy from Amazon. And then we'll need to put in a little bit of code. Won't get too heavy into that. This is a pretty straightforward project. And then ultimately, we will end up with this. This is the full system. And I've got a 12 volt battery here powering it all. So let's just take a quick second and we will look at the various components. And what we have here is an Arduino Uno. The version that I'm actually using in the project over here is actually an Arduino Micro. Uh, it's basically the same thing. Um, so many of you may have heard about Arduinos. 
It's just a very simple microcontroller board, um, basically meaning that it has lots of inputs and outputs, and you can write programs to control those inputs and outputs. So that is the Arduino that we'll be using. That's really the, the brains of the operation. And then I have a photo sensor board here. So the little thing at the top with the squiggly lines, that is a photoresistor. And ultimately what that does is the voltage changes based off of how bright the light is around here. All right, so that's gonna be our sensor. And then lastly, we have what's called a relay board. Basically all this is gonna do is it's gonna help our Arduino, which runs on five volts, be able to connect to something in particular this actuator, which is a motor we'll talk about in a second, to a 12 volt battery. So if I were to connect the battery, the 12 volts directly to the Arduino, uh, things would, would not be good. Um, that, that wouldn't work out so well. And so what we have is the relay board that basically will insulate the two. So here we have the actual system set up. So these are all of the pieces put together. And what you can see here are basically the same components. So the relay board, the Arduino, and then the photo sensor. So we've got all of those and they are currently powered by a little USB battery. So that's producing five volts. The big thing in this whole operation is the actual motor itself. So this black thing is called a linear actuator. And this is what's gonna actually open the door for the chickens and let them out. Um, like I said, it is powered by this 12 volt battery. Um, Dan has a 12 volt battery, it's not gonna be this big. Um, I just happen to have a, a spare one laying around, so I'm using that. What this will do is as soon as I connect the power here, so I'm gonna connect up this lead, and what is gonna happen is the sensor is set up to where when it's light, the door opens. So what's gonna happen is as soon as I plug this in, we are going to see this rod extend out from the actuator and in theory, open the door. And there we go, so fully extended. Now, what I'm gonna do here is cover this guy up, and so this would simulate nighttime. I'm just gonna take a black plastic box, cover over the light sensor, and now we'll see the door opener is retracting. There you go. I'm gonna disconnect it now so I don't get a bunch of noise when I take the cover back off. And so there you have it. So that in a, in a nutshell is the controller for our chicken door opener. And Dan is gonna talk about how this all gets installed mechanically. Um, he'll show you the whole thing. Uh, my goal really is to have covered the controlling pieces. If you are interested in automation in general, I have set up a new blog. It is called iotfoundry.com. So here's just a, a quick screenshot of that. And basically I like to tinker. I handle all kinds of automation projects using Arduinos, uh, Raspberry Pis, various electronic boards. The projects range everything from, in this case, a chicken door opener. I also have built an intermittent misting bed controller. I have a, a bunch of temperature and humidity sensors, moisture sensors, uh, you name it. I, I've even set it up where my kids will get a tweet when the dryer stops. So if you're into that kind of thing, or if you're curious about what you can do, get on over to the site and check it out. I give a listing of projects as I build them. So my goal is to put out a new project once every couple of weeks. And it will they'll include the full how-to of start to finish building these systems yourself. So if you're interested, check it out. And if you have any questions, drop me a line. I'm always willing to help. I also offer a service where I can help people build projects um, if they're not comfortable with some of the electronics or, or some of the coding. So hope you guys have enjoyed. Bye-bye. Thank you, Charlie, for putting all that together for us. That's a really cool service you have there because I have no idea about coding and putting all that stuff together. Thank you. Guys, stay tuned for an upcoming video where we will be doing the install 
on all the components for our system that Charlie put together for us. And we will get this chickshaw automated. <laughs>